Hi, everybody. This is Steve Burkhardt. I'm from uh, Macro Social Work Stories, and I'm excited. We're beginning a whole new day in the chapter of our podcast, uh, both with new producers, new directors, uh, and an opportunity to really build on what macro social work and all of social work is over these coming 20, 21 months. We have a heck of a time ahead of us, uh, as we know as a nation, and we ourselves are committed to, in these podcasts, to really make them engaging for yourselves, for your students, for fellow professionals in the field. Um, to make that as exciting and why we feel it's really a special new day, I'd like to introduce my new partners in these podcasts going forward. Uh, Dr. Gary Jones um, is somebody who will be speaking about a number of areas of interest, including one that is, is exciting to me that I'm learning, already have learned from him, on uh, the importance of STEM and social work itself. Christy Holmes, Dr. Christy Holmes, is somebody who uh, many of you will have known from before in the Macro Commission, uh, is also somebody, not only a clinician, she's somebody who's been involved in uh, important areas that we involved in committed to climate change are gonna have to address. So working in California and then elsewhere uh, through the wonders of social media on disaster services and how social workers can respond. Last but not least is uh, Ana Quinones, a, our administrative assistant and far more. Uh, one of the things we wanna emphasize about our podcast and Macro Social Work Stories is that the voices of many people matter uh, from a variety of walks of life and uh, different op who've had different opportunities and possibilities all of which we hope to create and maximize through these podcasts. So Anna, we're looking forward to your stories and to share with us as well uh, what you yourself are interested in pursuing. Right now, you, we know you're a student. We also know you're thinking about your future. So uh, Gary, I'd like to turn it over to you first. Dr. Jones, if you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're hoping our podcast can accomplish over the coming months. Okay, greetings everyone. I'm Dr. Jones, and I'm delighted to be a part of this team where we're looking at stories. I believe that everyone has a story, a unique story that can bring about desired change, that can inspire others to move forward in their lives. And so my name is Dr. Gary Jones, Jr. I'm a native of the state of Mississippi. I'm growing up in the South. Um, there are a lot of stereotypes. And, but after having a supportive network and reading a lot, I was able to see how there are great things that come from my state and my family and my supportive network and those who fought about injustice. Um, one of my sheroes is Fannie Lou Hamer, um, one who fought up and stood against injustice. And she stated that injustice, uh, she talked about how she was tired, uh, tired of being sick and tired. And so her um, advocacy, um, her desire to bring about change uh, really uh, it was a fire within me in that process. But um, Gary Jones, I'm a currently, I'm a assistant professor at Coppin State University in Baltimore, Maryland. And so I'm the director of field education. And there had an opportunity to partner with students and community agencies, uh, really to prepare students to integrate theory, knowledge, and their lived experience into the real world. Uh, due to COVID-19, uh, field placement has had a transition. Some are face-to-face, -face, some are virtual. And so my desire as a social scientist, social worker, um, to integrate um, these uh, capacities where um, technology is utilized to bring about change in um, the desire. So I'm looking forward to discuss, challenge, collaborate with colleagues uh, on my podcast, also around the nation, even the world, because of technology in that process. So thank you for having me. I've had the opportunity to work in child welfare for over 18 years. And when I say work, I should say partner, because it's a partnership with my clientele, my colleagues, and community members. And I've learned a lot uh, from uh, my experience. I've worked in Alabama, worked in Tennessee, worked in Maryland, worked in homeless youth, homeless populations, been an administrator. So I bring a, a level of expertise, as well as, as a learning spirit, um, to talk about child welfare, uh, systems of care um, that work with young people as they transition from juvenile justice, um, try to prevent them from going into other systems. Because if we support our young people, young adults, um, great things can happen in that process. So that's my desire. Um, and I'm glad that I'm able to be a part of this team. Thanks, that's really exciting. There's so many different topics that we're gonna to be able to cover over those months just from what you've already spoken about. Dr. Holmes, Christy. Uh, Hi. 
Thanks for having me. Dr. Gary Jones, all of us have a lot in common. So we have overlap, uh, overlapping areas, uh, child welfare being one of them. I think we've all had uh, some involvement, which will help in the discussions. I'm, gosh, what am I going to focus on during our time together? I think it's also going to morph as we go because this year has changed everything so much. And I'm finding along with clients, along with the systems I work with and things are morphing very, very quickly on how we're handling just, I mean, we're sitting here on Zoom, which is now the standard way to talk to everyone all day. <laughs> so I think that we're going to find that as our discussions continue, in 2021, we're going to also be changing how we do things and hopefully leading the way in the discussions with our guests in order to help everybody else model. So no one has to reinvent the wheel. We can just share information. I'm spending a lot of time right now um, outside of doing a group practice uh, it, with COVID-19 response with Red Cross and a local government deployment here in Los Angeles. So my focus most days is on pandemic and access to care. So um, I look forward to bouncing ideas off of all of you and the guests we have, as well as our listeners. So thank you for having me. It's, it's great. Thank, thank, thank both of you. And Anna, you don't have your doctorate yet, although having worked with you a little bit, someday I do expect you to, uh, if you decide that's what you want. But if you could tell us a little bit about you. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Anna Quiones. Um, I am a senior at Hunter College with a major in sociology. Um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I've had experience with foster care, adoption. Um, I was placed in foster care at birth and I was adopted at the age of four. However, my adoptive parents passed away when I was 16. So I re-entered the foster care system again. And it's, I've been in, I was in foster care for five years. I aged out two years ago. Um, my time in foster care, it has made me decide that I want to become a social worker for children in the child welfare system, especially for those who are medically complex. Um, I plan on going to grad school in September, preferably Hunter or Columbia. And I, what else? Um, soon, eventually I would wanna open up my own foster care agency and whatever. So yeah, sorry. That's good, Anna, good. Just, just go with we it. Need, we need to <laughs> okay. <our> lives. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Anna, thank you. Um, no problem. It's exciting to have you with us and for your story and those with whom you're working uh, and continue to do work with young people and with, still within the child welfare system. You clearly will uh, enrich all these conversations as well. So um, to the audience out there, we, uh, we have talked as a foursome about what we'd like to do in the future, uh, the type of themes, the type of issues we hope to discuss. As Dr. Jones mentioned, as Gary mentioned, uh, STEM uh, is gonna be one that we really do think is important. It's one that social workers tend to shy away from. At the same time, it's something that actually is something that we need to be able to engage in if we're gonna be able to handle some of the problems that our cl clients and communities confront. Uh, Christy, the work that you're now doing with the pandemic, the work you've done with disaster services, the pandemic and disaster services all speak to climate change. They all speak to the changes that are going on that we in our environment have to be able to deal with in new ways that uh, I know some of the people you're having on are gonna be, be dealing with. Uh, um, income inequality, uh, the issues that have been brought up related to uh, the inequalities that we see throughout uh, everything in the pandemic that have been re-exposed all over again. And of course, they connect to systemic racism. Uh, all four of those topics are ones that we want to address in a concrete way within our field. We're not just going to talk about everything that's outside the world. Uh, as the four of us have discussed, we want to talk about it within our profession, our world, not to insulate us, but for us to take responsibility for what we know we have to change within our profession as well. So with that idea in mind, we've already mapped out a few sessions that are uh, going to be in play on YouTube. Uh, we're going to make sure that it's cast, that the net is cast wide. Um, uh, Christy, I know you've already invited the first person. Uh, Gary, I know you have a couple of people, and Anna, 
you yourself have a couple of people as well that uh, we're going to we're going to be able to have on other a future week. So, Christy, if you could mention the name and the type of topic that uh, our first guest next week is going to have, and then Gary, I'll turn it over, and then other people you might be uh, thinking about. Gary, I'd like to sure. Know. sure. Gary's Gary. Gary's actually on mute, so you probably want to unmute him. Oh, Lord, uh, I don't know why that's happening because <laughs> I'm not doing it. I can just see. I can see his big red no. Um, I've invited David Green. Uh, he has been a friend of mine for a very long time. We were in a cohort together in our MSW program. So uh, via DCFS and he's now SEIU. He's done a lot of labor work and I'd love to have him come talk. He's generally my favorite. He was my favorite go-to guest speaker for just about everything or any class he'd come in and everyone was always happy. So I think he would be <laughs> that, that my best first person to come on in and he can speak to things on a macro level while also having a lot of micro experience as well. Um, and one of the things that uh, popped up for me while you were talking was also the distrust of the system. So in the COVID-19 response right now, it's um, there's definitely a gap, especially when it comes to SES, but there's um, a gap in trust. So it, a lot of the workers are people of color who are also usually near poverty level and they have a distrust of the system. So even when vaccines are available, they aren't necessarily taking them. And so talking about why there's a gap, there's there's more than one factor and we have to address all of them, so. Great. Yeah, we're gonna have a lot of conversations. But the, the more we peel the onion, the more there's gonna be. Gary, uh, what have you got on deck? I know you've spoken to a few people. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Dr. Holmes. We're talking about um, health equity. Uh, we know that there are a number of different inequalities in our, in our society. And so one thing I would like to with this podcast is to recommend different books. Henry the Lax mm -hmm. is a, a wonderful, not a wonderful story, but it, it depicts the story of how uh, medicine utilized um, and was utilized without permission of, of individuals. So a medical apartheid. Um, so there are never resources of why uh, communities of color um, are hesitant um, to run to various uh, governmental programs uh, when it comes to medicine, a long legacy of history of that. And so we want to re do recommendations and have different guests. Uh, one of my guests I'm so excited about is a colleague in Baltimore, Maryland, a social worker, but not a traditional social worker. She's in the community. Uh, many times in different communities, uh, gentrification takes place. Mm -hmm. And so because of uh, people being displaced, we need social workers. We need community activists in communities, um, basically letting communities know their rights. And so in March, we're going to have a guest who actually created a book, uh, Before You Build, Building from the Heart of the Community. Mm. And so she's invested in the community, and she wants to have some resources, things she's learned over the years of how to maintain com communities where it's not a takeover, where the communities benefit its members and not, um, it, displacement does not take place in that process. So I'm gonna invite her, um, uh, Ms. Bob McDonald-Mill, uh, for that particular podcast. Also, I have a colleague in Ottawa, Tennessee, had a privilege of working in Southern Adventist University. And one of my colleagues there, she has done, her work is working with police officers, law enforcement trainings. And so we just wanna hear her voice and how things are working with her partnership. Uh, many times individuals may have an issue with um, organization or institution, but as social workers, we know in order to bring about change, we have to be collaborations and partnerships. So I'm looking forward to having my colleague in Tennessee to um, be with us virtually um, for that event. Another colleague here on campus of Coppin State University, um, we had an event recently called Healing City Baltimore. Healing City Baltimore emerged because of trauma violence, um, dis um, environment communities were not really invested in. And so we're gonna talk about how students, um, legislators, educators, systems, organizations, and social workers came together to create a summit to bring about sustainable change. Um, they passed a policy called the Elijah Cummings Act recently, where they're gonna address trauma and every one of their um, public officials will be trained on trauma. What if we took that around the nation and train all public officials on trauma and how to deal with that? And so we're gonna hear and talk about um, their perspective 
but um, we have a, a lot, lot of ideas. And because of the, this podcast and virtual space and our expertise, just looking forward to opportunities uh, that will emerge. Great, thank you so much. Uh, those are exciting, exciting and incredibly important topics for us to be able to address. That's wonderful. Anna, um, I know you already have a podcast uh, uh, person in, that we're gonna be able to interview on the 4th of March. Yes, um, my person, her name is April Dinwoody. She's also my mentor through a program called Adoptment, which matches um, foster or adopted youth with mentors who have been either in foster care or adopted. Um, April has her own podcast where she talks about adoption and how it is as a transracially adopted person. Um, she, she talks about like, how her life has been being biracial, but growing up in a predominantly white environment and how like that's like affected her, how, you know, like the stuff that she's been through has motivated her to help people like youth, especially like younger adults, like manage and succeed in life. So I'm very excited to bring her onto the podcast and I know she has a lot to say and she's also very excited and can't wait to join. Wonderful. And I know you've talked to uh, some of the other young people you're working with for a future podcast, not March 4th, but in the future. Do you briefly want to mention the youth council you're working with? <clears throat> yes. Um, so I, my foster care agency, which is called New Alternatives for Children, I created and I lead the youth advisory board, which is members like we have about like 10 to 11 members between the ages of 14 to 25. We meet once a month to talk about changes within our foster care community, changes we wanna see happen at the agency and stuff like that. So I have one member who, his name is Anthony Turner. He is 24. He is a recent graduate from Columbia, Columbia University, has his master's in social work. He also has his own podcast and he just started and um, I was on his podcast last week. So I know he also has a lot to talk about as well. Wonderful. So uh, I've spoken to uh, some of my colleagues about coming on in April and later March. One of them is uh, Dr. Darlene ba Bailey, the former Dean of Bryn Mawr. Uh, she also was somebody who recently besides being a special assistant to the Dean, she herself was once the Dean, but now uh, decided to step down. She's Dean Emeritus and is also someone who has been involved in, uh, continue to be involved in issues of social and racial justice. And it turns out that in Philadelphia over the last couple of months, um, black students from three schools, uh, Bryn Mawr, Haverford and Swarthmore have been organizing a Black Lives Matter sets of protests related to uh, the, the systemic inequity within the universities, those colleges. And she's going to be coming on as a, somebody deeply involved in this uh, to be able to talk about lessons learned that perhaps could be shared by all to all our schools about what we have to address, what we ourselves have to deal with going forward. Um, another person that I've invited on is uh, Gladys Carrion. She's a former commissioner of uh, Administration for Children's Services. And even though she was commissioner, um, she's somebody who's always been a fierce advocate for children. She was responsible for the closing down of all the upstate New York uh, juvenile just, justice centers that were little prisons that uh, the state legislator fought, legislature fought for years to keep open, even though there'd be 32 staff, four kids, and um, they'd remain open. They were a jobs creation program for rural uh, New York at the expense of young black and brown youth. And she fought and won this uh, along with people from uh, the state of uh, Missouri doing the same. And the commissioner of Missouri and she are now leading a fight on exploring and developing commitments throughout child welfare and human services on ending systemic racism. And she has a policy uh, white paper out on this to be able to do just that. So she'll be coming on to be able to speak as well. So. Um, Folks out there in the world, I hope you've heard that we have a number of exciting topics that come from our own experiences, the experiences of uh, people throughout our field. Um, 
I'd like to turn it over to Christy and Gary. If there's anything else you'd like to say regarding invitations you'd like to make to our audience. And then uh, I think the four of us will all wrap up as well. Go ahead, Gary. Oh, you're on mute. Just, I just welcome Sorry. everyone to be a part of this process. Uh, we want to hear your voice. Uh, when you had an opportunity to um, email us as well as in the comment section, tell us what your interests are. Um, if you have questions, if you, if you I want to challenge what's being provided, we're open um, to that process. But this will be an opportunity for us to go on a journey where we collaborate, challenge, and learn and reflect upon our society from a map macro perspective because we want to hear your story everyone's story is very important and so um, we all have different interests and so my interest is just to utilize technology to make a global impact uh, we talk about global impact uh, prior to COVID-19 one had to travel overseas to have global impact but now technology can be utilized to have global and national um, impact um, that's sustainable in that process and it's affordable and so we want to provide opportunities um, for discussions and collaboration. And one of my desires as a professor is to promote uh, the integration of diverse voices in the classroom. And so on this podcast, we're gonna have diverse voices. Some we may not get along with uh, or understand or agree, but we want to have a deeper understanding. The principle seeking to understand rather than understood is something that we hold dear on this podcast. And so we look forward to the opportunity to Look at the verse uh, voices. A student at the University of Chicago created an entire syllabus, of, a, a biography of diverse voices that many times are left out in our curriculum. And so we want to make sure that this podcast has a diverse, diverse voices, and then we're going to provide a number of resources for you in that process. So looking forward to you partnering with us on this journey.